Well, good morning, guys. Uh, it's Theo Stock here for Yachting Monthly, and welcome to Friesland in the Netherlands. I've come to a little village called Heeg, on the edge of a lake called Heegemeer, um, to see Jachtver Heeg. Um, excuse my Dutch pronunciation, um, all you Dutch speakers out there, I know that was terrible. Um, I've come here to see the new boat that they build, which I saw at Dusseldorf earlier this year, and that is the Pointer 30. Now, Pointer Yachts have been around for a little while, but this is the biggest boat they've built so far. It's very pretty lines, and it looks like a really fun little sailing boat. Um, so we're gonna go out for sail in a minute. Without further ado, let's get going. Right, we are out on the water now, and it's a fairly light wind day today. We've got about seven or eight knots of true wind, uh, and sort of nine or ten knots of apparent wind as we're going upwind. The nice thing is that this boat seems to be really easily driven. It's not a heavy boat at under two and a half tons, uh, and most of that's, or 40% of that's in the ballast. So she's pretty stiff, she's reasonably narrow at two and a half meters and with a really fine entry. And we're getting angles at wind of around about 30 degrees to the apparent wind, tacking through, uh, if I can do the maths quickly, about 80 degrees, 75, 80 degrees we're tacking through. So this boat's going nicely at wind. As you can see, she's got a, a composite wheel. Uh, she's got one wheel and I've got it canted to the windward side at the moment. So it means that I can sit up on the side deck or I can sit behind it. Um, but a clever feature of this boat is that I can press a little foot pedal here and swing it in the into the middle. And if I want to sit on the leeward side or when I want to tack, I can swing it down to leeward. And I can see my telltales really nicely there. And that doesn't disengage the steering at any point. I don't lose control. I'm just moving the whole uh, steering system. And it's from a, it's a Jeffa steering system. Um, with Jeffa rudders. This boat's got twin rudders, so single fin keel during 1.25 and twin rudders. I'll swing this back up to the windward side because I'm pinching slightly. I'll never do. On the helm, you can see that she's really light. I mean, we're not pushing the boat hard today in these conditions, um, but I've got complete control over the boat. As with you might expect with twin rudders, it's um, maybe slightly less feel than you would get on a single rudder, but I'm not loading the boat up here, so it's hard to tell what it would be like in a blow. Um, but I can feel that the boat is doing nicely. I can feel that the boat is balanced. Um, and this is a very pleasant helmy experience if I was concentrating on where I was going. Uh, we've got a fractional rig, and you can see here I've got the uh, purchase for the backstay. So I've got a reasonable amount of control over the sail shape. There's no traveller uh, on this boat. You can see the main sheet comes down here with a fine tune to a pedestal in the middle of the cockpit. Um, but I have got a reasonably powerful uh, kicking strap to control leech tension. Uh, so here we go. Here's a little bit of breeze. Let's sail to that for a second. Picking up, right? Yeah. Uh, so we've had the boat uh, going at six knots upwind in uh, 11 or 12 knots of true. So you get eight or nine, uh, oh, sorry, 11 or 12 knots of apparent. So if you get eight or nine knots of uh, true wind, then this boat will, is quickly able to accelerate up to or start to get towards hull speed. Um, if I want to control the main, that's within easy reach. If I want to trim the jibs, um, I have to go forwards, although there is an option for a self-tacking jib on this boat. Yeah, uh, You can, if you want to, lead the jibs aft onto the uh, secondary winches. We've got the Code Zero sheets led to that at the moment. So we've got the Code Zero up now, uh, set off the little integral bow sprit at the front on the bow. And we are doing five and a half, six knots 
at 60 degrees to the apparent wind and here comes a little gust boat heels to it it's obviously reasonably narrow on the water line so slightly less form stability than some of the really big wide boats these days but you get better windward performance for that and now we're doing up six six and a half knots in uh, maybe eight to ten knots of true wind so that's really nice performance and this is just so light and lovely slipping along the wake's not really making any noise we're back in harbour now after a lovely little sail out on the water there wasn't loads of wind uh, but there was enough to get the boat going um, properly up to hull speed uh, certainly in the gusts now uh, we're back in he um, at the at the boatyard um, we've just had a little bit of lunch, which is very nice. So I just thought we'd have a little bit more of a detailed look around the cockpit. It's starting to spit a bit, so I might have to go and hide below in a second. But here um, at the aft end, you can see we've got the wheel canted to starboard. And like I showed out on the water, uh, you can cant the wheel over to either side using the little foot pedal, or you can have it in the middle. So if you're steering under engine, uh, that's a really nice height to have it, really comfortable height for steering at. Um, that goes to the twin rudders. You've got the rudder heads just here for emergency steering. With the wheel centered, it's a really nice height to stand at. And then you've got access to the quadrants in both of these lockers. Going forwards then, got quite good side decks and they come uh, all the way aft, relatively narrow past the cockpit combings, but they're curved so that you can sit outboard. What you've got really nicely here is some um, uh, halyard organizers and then deck clutches coming straight back to really good hark and primary winches one on either side and a really nice design touch are these permanently molded rope bins that drain over onto the side decks um, for keeping all of the halyards completely out of the cockpit so you don't need rope bags i think that's a really neat touch um, uh, and then you haven't got handrails on the coach roof but it's uh, this would be the forward end of the spray hood if you had one but it's relatively easy to get straight past the marsh. You've got the shrouds to hold on to. Um, the shrouds are taken down to the combings. The chain plates are fully outboard to give you a nice wide angle. Um, and then you've got adjustable jib cars on the coach roof here. If you wanted to, you could have the jib sheet taken all the way back to the primary winches in the cockpit, and then you would be able to adjust them from the helm, which I think would be a really nice option because I could imagine sailing this boat short-handed. There's good grip molding on deck. Well, you haven't got that. This boat's got a really neat touch that this has got S-Tech synthetic teak and this is actually molded into the GRP. So they put the S-Tech upside down in the mold and then they mold the deck on top of it. So it's completely flush. You get the advantage of the grip, um, but there's no way that this can delaminate, peel off, um, and that's really securely stuck in and there's nothing to trip over. So I haven't ever seen a boat do that before. I think that's a really clever technique, which I like. The foredeck, the coach roof comes quite a long way forward. And here you've got three hatches for the main, sorry, for the forward compartment above the galley and in the heads compartment. There's still a decent amount of working space up forwards here um, with a good large anchor locker that's got an electric windlass. Um, it's not a great fall for the chain because it slopes forward to maximize foot space for the forward berth. So you might just have to make sure that you don't get chain pile ups there. But you've got a good wrap. Um, around the horizontal axis windlass there, so it should still give a good pull on the chain. This has got six millimeter stainless chain. Um, you've also got in there below deck furling for your jib, so you've got a nice low foot for the uh, for additional performance extra sail area, and then a molded bowsprit um, which houses the um, bow anchor roller, sorry, uh, and the anchor stows in that. And then we still got rig the Code Zero which we had up earlier with the furling lines taken off. And then good solid deck gear here, big cleats for, for mooring off and furling lines kept taken off along the um, combings. You've got quite deep uh, molded tow rails here so it keeps you pretty secure on deck. All in all, I think this is a really seaworthy layout up here. Stowage aft is good. We've got um, good deep, deep bins on either side. There's another one here. Um, and as with all of the cockpit benches, uh, you've got um, a lip along the edge. So when you're sitting up on the coach combing side, you've got something to uh, brace yourself against. Um, these have got waterproof seals around them. 
and then two large lazarettes that also give you access to your steering quadrants and your autopilot. As you can see, we've also got a fold down bathing platform and that comes forward here. It's quite heavy actually. Initially, but that comes up and then locks off with a bolt there and a bolt there. And that's got an integral bathing ladder that slides out like that. So it means that you can access the water really easily. And we'll just lower that back down again. And that's how we get on and off the boat. Uh, once that's uh, up and you're sailing, you've got guard wires that go across all the way aft. Sail controls on the boat are good. We've got a main sheet uh, with a course control and a fine control, so that's quite well set up. You've also got a really powerful purchase for the split backstay, so you can control the shape of the main and power or depower as gusts come through. So it has a little bit of a, a performance element, even if it doesn't have a traveler. Instead, you'll be using the kicker up at the mast, but that's absolutely fine. And then we've got these really long benches which are about 180 meters, 180 centimeters long on either side. So there's plenty of space for relaxing in the cockpit and socializing with your friends, which is what this boat's all about. Right, well, the rain's just got a bit heavier. So I'm just gonna duck down below um, now and we can have a look around inside the boat. As you can see, uh, it's a relatively low sleek boat. Uh, that's in part due to the low freeboard and the sleek low coach route. So it hasn't got loads of headroom. We're looking at about uh, one meter 60 here. So you can move around quite easily, quite comfortably. Sitting down, you've got loads of headroom, um, but it's not a, a stand up boat as it were. Um, sitting down though, I am at eye level for looking out of the coach route windows, a little bit more if I want to see the horizon outside but this is a really pleasant and surprisingly light place to be because these windows go the full length um, of the of the saloon and there's a couple of there's two hatches up forwards one above the galley uh, one above the heads and one above the forward cabin as well so we've got a double berth up there it's relatively narrow um, I'll check it in a bit and then we've got a galley a workstation in the saloon we've got a bench to starboard that I'm sitting on uh, this seat back pops up if you want to make it a little bit wider. And then opposite it, we've got these two very stylish uh, swivel chairs, leather clad swivel chairs. You can choose the colour that you want there with a little table uh, between them, sort of a, a coffee bar, a little shrine to the Nespresso machine um, and a workstation. Uh, under the companionway, we've got the access to the inboard engine. On this boat, we've got a six kilowatt torpedo pod drive. Uh, and that's got two um, sets of five kilowatt hour batteries giving you 10 kilowatt hours um, in total. Uh, earlier, we had a little go with the engine and we got it up to uh, six, six and a half knots under engine, but you've only got a range of about an hour and a half at that speed. Rain it back into five knots, which is still a, a perfectly sensible cruising speed, and you've got four or five hours of range on that. So that's not bad at all. It's not gonna get you across the English Channel, but for most people, that is more than enough to get in and out of harbour and do a little bit of sailing when things get light. If you're motor sailing, of course, and you just want a little bit more boat speed, that's where an electric engine comes in to its own, really, because you can just use a tiny bit of power um, and really boost your speed as you go. So that's quite nice. Um, uh, and then we're plugged into shore power now, and that's how we're charging up. There isn't any other means of charging on this boat. So if you are going to be having the electric engine, you need to have a regular source of charging. There isn't necessarily space to put a gen set in here, um, but sure, you could find it if you really wanted to. Um, let's have a look at the workstation then. So the idea of this workstation, it's not really intended as a chart table, but you can fold it out. And that is, I think, big enough for a leisure folio chart uh, or a little pilot book. Um, and you've got some, some storage space under here. It's a little bit of a shame it doesn't go slightly further back um, because that probably would have been big enough for a chart, a, a sort of an admiralty ledger folio. But underneath here, you've got the fridge in the galley. Here, there you go. So you've got an opening isotherm fridge there, 50 litres, and you've got a little freezer compartment at the top, pulls out as well. 
Uh, but this workstation is really so that you can do your emails and pull it out. So that comes out. Um, it's a little bit squashed for my knees, just under there. Um, this chair doesn't adjust. Um, again, a little bit of an alcove in the molding there would be quite nice. But actually, if you're just going to do a few emails and sit there, it's nice to have a proper chair that I'm in here, uh, which I'm really liking. And it's a lovely little bit of joinery there, which gives the boat a nice feel as well. Breaks up the uh, fiberglass moulding on the inside. Next to me here, um, I've got a bin. There's a couple of bins um, either side, and that's just into this interior moulding, which is all bonded into the hull and is part of the structural integrity of the boat, making it stiffer without really adding too much more weight. Over on this side, you can see here we've got our little coffee table. It's a really nice sociable place and actually this is where you can stretch out your legs. You can actually put your feet up. Sorry, putting my feet on the seats there. Uh, you can put your feet up and relax. Um, you've got your coffee making machine here. Uh, you have to be on shore power for that, but some boats have got an inverter. And then you've got more stowage in the bin there. At the moment, those haven't got liners in or baskets, but a few sort of baskets or canvas bags would neaten those up a little bit. This is um, the prototype. This was hull number one, which is the demo boat. Uh, they're just about to finish hull number four, but they are rolling off the line now. On the starboard side, then, we've got a settee berth. Um, you could very easily put a lee cloth on there. There isn't one fitted at the moment. This is one meter 70 long, so a bit of more of a child's berth. But after this, in here, you've got a quarter berth. You've got one on either side, and that's um, just over two meters long. So there's plenty of space to stretch out, and it's quite a nice width in there as well. In terms of stowage, I've got a little drinks holder rack behind me there that sits in a dip. Um, there is, there's no access to the stowage behind here. Um, although I'm sure that they could add that or put, you could put a couple of hatches in there if you wanted to. There's loads of stowage under this seat here. So we've got lots of bins. That's a uh, domestic battery uh, and then just bin stowage up against the hull lining in here. So there is good space in there. Similarly, you've got space under the aft berths and outboard of the aft berth. You've got um, an open bin, the full length. So it's, um, it's not lockers. Uh, with, with covered fronts and loads of joinery. The whole idea is to keep this clean and simple and straightforward, um, which makes it easier for them to build, but also easier to maintain and keep clean. As with the, the rest of the boat, uh, things are kept fairly simple and straightforward. I'm in the galley now. I'm actually perching just above the fridge on, uh, by the workstation. Um, and I've got just enough headroom. I'm a little bit bent over, but if I were cooking, I think this is the position I'd be in. It's not gimbaled or anything like that, so um, it's not for use to see. Um, but in harbour, um, you've got two gas rings and a little sink, and they are underneath this fold down um, lid here. Uh, you could have induction in there if you preferred, and some people are opting for that. Um, but we've got this uh, fairly, this, this little sink system, um, and that's neat. Uh, it's a little bit sort of camping esque, um, uh, but it works quite nicely. Behind the galley here, uh, we've got these bags that um, clip onto uh, a wire that stretch the whole length of the boat. Um, and it actually goes through the structural supports. It's got these little fair leads here and they tension it the whole way along. So what you can do is clip on as many bags as you want or whatever storage system you want to choose. Um, so you could have open ones for kitchen utensils, tea bags, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's again a, a simple and quite neat little solution which I quite like. I guess you could put in a second wire if you didn't want them swinging when you're healing over. I don't think most people want too much. And then just forwards here we've got a little chopping board and underneath that is access to a bin. Uh, there's also a little power socket at the forward end here and then underneath I've got a opening hatch. There we go and that gives me access to uh, washing up bowls. I've got a nice big felt bin in here, cutlery boxes, all that kind of stuff. So I've got a reasonable amount of stowage um, that's pretty simply done as well. The forward cabin um, is just forward of the heads, sorry, the galley and the heads on this side. We've got an opening door and that serves either the galley or the heads. Um, means there's only one door 
Um, if you're sailing as a couple, that's fine. That gives you privacy. Um, if you had guests who wanted to use the heads in the night, I, I don't think it's a problem, um, but it's quite an interesting, simple little solution, which I don't mind at all. Um, the forward berth itself is over two meters long, two meters ten, um, and at the widest end, it is widest part. It's uh, 130 centimeters wide, so it's a pretty narrow but long uh, double berth. Um, there's interior moulding again, as there is throughout um, either side, with a little tray shelf above it, and then bag stowage uh, above the shelves, and that's on either side. Uh, looking at the interior moulding, it would have been possible to make the bed a little bit wider. It's a slight shame they haven't done that because in the interior moulding isn't actually used for any stowage at the moment, and I think a few extra centimetres at the foot end uh, would stop you kicking your partner's feet in the night. Um, that said, this is a snug, secure, um, and very usable little double berth. I don't mind if I have a little lie down in here. And there's an opening hatch above me there for good amounts of ventilation and light. And that's big enough to either climb out of or put a spinnaker through as well. There we go. So the heads is to port just after the forward cabin. Forward cabin door closes there, and then you have access into the heads. And if you want to use the heads, you have to close the door. Excuse me. When you're all finished, if you want to wash your hands, you're using the galley sink just over there. So, just to explain the construction of this boat, this boat is in polyester resin uh, and laid up by hand. Um, below the waterline, you have a four millimeter core mat uh, sandwich. So that's 50% uh, uh, resin and 50% foam pre impregnated um, so that it's a really solid laminate and slightly more dense and heavy than your normal foam sandwich. Um, and that's under all of the waterline except for along the center line, um, around the keel, and around the rudder posts where you've got solid GRP laminate. Above the waterline, you've got 20 millimeter Divinacell foam core um, with layup either side of that. Um, and that goes for the deck, sorry, the, the hull, the top sides, um, the deck, um, and the uh, inner liner. So the whole lot is really strong. Um, the deck and the liner are all bonded together with the hull um, so that it, it's not laminated over, but on a boat of this size, um, that's a really secure join. And then structurally, if we have a look in here, um, in one of these lockers, just move the cushions out of the way. Uh, you can also see uh, that we've got um, uh, stringers, um, lateral stringers, and that is, uh, they are stainless steel beams, um, and there's uh, three or four of those that go laterally across the hull to spread the deck of the keel loads, and those are then laminated into the hull. Um, making that a really solid, strong point for the uh, keel bolt to be bolted into. If you want to, you can also set up a folding table um, uh, that uh, clips on. Uh, and this is a dining table for the saloon. Just tighten it up there. Um, and this fits into both the saloon and up in the cockpit. And it means that you can get four people sitting around a table inside and eating, in addition to your little coffee table on the opposite side. So uh, there we go. That's the uh, test of the Pointer 30. We've had a good little sail out on the lake today, although it felt larger than a lake. Um, and then we've had a good look around uh, down below and on deck as well. And I hope you've enjoyed having a look around um, as much as I have. I think this is a really nice little boat. It's quite an interesting design concept. concept. Uh, I think they've managed to do the minimalism really well without taking away from any of the functionality. Um, and I think this will be quite a robust boat that should uh, stand the test of time quite well, not least because I think she's a really good sailing boat. The lines, um, the narrow water line, the low freeboard, the sheer line all make her really pretty to look at. Um, it's a really visually appealing boat. I think on deck, everything works nicely. I love the canting wheel. I think that's great. And she's got plenty of sail power to get her moving, even when the weather's light. Uh, and I would love to see what she can do in slightly stronger wind. I'm told that she will very happily sit at seven and a half knots upwind 
um, and eight plus knots with a code zero up off the wind. Given today's performance up at six, six and a half knots, I'm inclined to believe that. Um, so she's a very capable sailing boat with loads of control thanks to those twin rudders. She's also very comfortable down below. There's not loads of headroom and it's a relatively basic fit out, which is exactly what the builder promises and is exactly what the boat's designed to do. Whether that's what you're looking for or not is up to you. In terms of what she costs, she's not the cheapest boat. She's very nicely built by a traditional Dutch boatyard um, and the associated quality that comes with that. Her base price is 154,000 euros, excluding VAT, which is a smidgen over 130,000 pounds or $170,000 if you're in America. Um, obviously, you've got to add on tax and optional extras, but you're looking around about the 200,000 uh, euro mark once you've added on sales and electronics and propulsion. What you get for your money is a very capable sailing boat that is stylish, comfortable down below, and will do you very well for a little weekend sailing, possibly some racing, um, and even a bit of cruising a bit further afield. This is a really nice boat, and I like it.